Cheringham, episode 28, A Dinner to Die For. Written by Matthew Costello and Neil Richards. Narrated by Neil Dudgeon. Chapter 1. The New Season Helen Edwards looked up as Julie placed a tiny plate with an ice cream cone-shaped thing on the table in front of her. Helen knew, without even trying it, that it would be a totally delicious start to this special tasting menu. Key to picking plates for the upcoming Cheringham Opera Society charity dinner. Tonight, she dined with the Society's patron, Lady Repton, always an entertaining dinner partner. For a woman with so much money, she had hardly any airs at all. As the small plates alighted on the table, she took a sip of her Cotswold's gin and tonic, the slice of grapefruit a revelation. Lady Repton, meanwhile, enjoyed a Manhattan, a drink unknown to Helen, but by reputation pretty strong and Lady R's sips, none too dainty. Lady Repton had already agreed once again to serve as host for this year's event, which would also include a live broadcast of Torandot, all the way from the Metropolitan Opera House in New York. Well, Lucinda, what do you think of the amuse-bouche? She watched as Lady Repton tasted the tiny cone, let it linger on her lips, then allowed herself a smile. Well, my dear, it certainly amuses me. Me too, said Helen, savouring the flavour too. I can't imagine how Sam makes the pastry so light. And at that moment, watching from the side, Julie, co-owner with her husband Sam, the chef, came bustling over. Enjoy that, ladies? Helen smiled. She and her husband Michael were regulars at the Spotted Pig, even though it often required booking weeks in advance. She knew Lady Repton was a frequent visitor too, though she had her own chef back at Repton Hall, who was more than proficient. She let Lady R go first. I did indeed, Julie. Goose liver mousse, I imagine. Capers, hint of uh, sherry, perhaps. Vinsanto, Julie said. Lady Repton beamed. Yes, of course, that nutty honey taste and the flaky cone, so thin, perfect and Helen saw Julie beam, high praise indeed from Lady Repton, who was notoriously difficult to please. How was it for you, Helen? said Julie. Oh, delightful, can't wait for the rest of the plates. Julie smiled and turned away to resume her duties, but Lady Repton reached out, a light touch to her arm. Uh, Julie, if it's not too busy tonight, might Sam come out and uh, discuss a few of the items as we progress? Julie smiled and nodded, but Helen saw a slight cloud cover her face. Perhaps the idea of a special tasting menu, even for just two people, was just a bit daunting for the small restaurant. Though the pig had certainly tackled such things before. But Helen thought, too much pressure tonight? She knew Julie had told a few people she was pregnant. First baby. But babies mean expenses, and then there was obviously the question of who'd run front of house during those first months. Julie left. Lady Repton turned to Helen. By the way, have you tried that new place at the Bay Leaf? Not yet. When Michael and I do go out for a proper meal, we always like to come here. Lady Repton nodded. I agree, but I wanted to try it, and you know? She lowered her voice. It was absolutely marvellous. The duck confit, world class. Helen saw her friend and the society's patron look away. I'm afraid our friends here at the Spotted Pig have some serious competition on their hands. Helen nodded. 
Maybe that explained Julie's seeming a bit tense. So, Lady Repton said, shall we discuss the dinner? Helen took a sip of her gin and tonic. Absolutely. All's set for the live broadcast. Those tech people from Chipping Norton know their stuff. Sitting in our little theatre, we'll feel like we're in the front row of the Met itself. Imagine Puccini's Turandot live from New York, right there at Repton Hall. Helen knew that people were indeed excited. Even her daughter Sarah, who was no great opera fan, was determined to attend, both for the experience and what promised to be a great dinner. Sarah was bringing her American friend, Jack, who Helen was aware certainly did know his opera. We're sold out, you know, Helen said, and with contributions part of the gala ticket? Yes, and not to mention the added donations, the silent auction. Well, our little opera society will be stronger than ever. Helen picked up her glass to clink, and Lady R followed suit. Cheers to that. And then Lady Repton shot up a finger. And that has given me an idea. Lucinda Repton leaned forward, as if about to pass secrets involving enemy troop movements. An idea? Lady R nodded. A rather daunting one. Helen kept her eyes on her, even as she spotted the server in the back, hurrying over with two more small plates. Helen waited as Lucinda Repton looked around. What if next year, instead of our regular schedule of seasonally themed selections, she proceeded slowly, what if, for one of the dates, perhaps in the summer, we actually mount a full opera? A full opera? Helen knew that had never been considered. With their small group, well, it, it was beyond their reach. Now, hear me out, Helen. I mean, with the chorus at its current healthy size and all, we might just be up to it. A dozen reasons that screamed impossible popped into Helen's mind. Oh, but, Lucinda, you know what it takes to mount an opera. The, the resources needed, the lead singers, the hours of rehearsal, costumes, scenery. And as much as the idea seems wonderful for our little opera society here to take it on and to do it within, what, six months? Well, Lady Repton smiled. I know, but... Here's my plan. We pick a one-act opera, something within the limits of the stage at the Little Theatre and also our musical resources, something within the reach of our dear Cheringham Philharmonic. Though dubbed a Philharmonic, Helen knew that the Cheringham Orchestra, which on occasion mutated into a band, really more resembled an expanded chamber group with a few brass instruments and a big bass drum thrown in. Fortunately, it also featured some players of real talent. Helen had a thought then. You mean something like Pagliacci, manageable size, and... Precisely, that or Cavalleria Rusticana or Puccini's Gianni Schicci. Very funny, that, but I think for the drama, the music, yes, Pagliacci is spot on. Lady Repton grabbed her now mostly finished Manhattan for another clink. We bring in a guest artist or two, someone for the last week or two of rehearsals. Think of it, a real production right here. We'd probably have to do a series of weekends. Everyone will want to come. Lady Repton grinned. What do you think? Helen grinned back. The idea, a little mad, but just maybe doable. You know what? I think, well, I think it's a splendid idea, and that opera, perfect. And the lady whose financial resources would make such a thing happen clapped her hands together gleefully. Fabulous, Lady Repton said. We can start laying the groundwork tonight and... But then there was motion from the open kitchen, more plates arriving at the pass, Julie and another server gathering up the next round of tastings, and Sam, the chef, coming out, the star of the feast. And Helen thought this evening is going to get even better. On that front, though, she was about to be proved... Terribly wrong. Chapter 2 A Last-Minute Surprise Helen looked down as the plates arrived, all visually arresting. Lady Repton looked up at Sam. Sam, can you sit a bit and tell us about these amazing plates? Helen saw him fire a look at Julie. Julie's expression said, Go on, sit. He pulled up a chair. A quick smile. Uh, sure, not too busy tonight, being a Monday and all. So, um, you have there, 
He pointed at one plate with small circles of meat dotted with what looked like jam. Our wild boar roulades, marinated, pan-seared, then covered with a seasonal currant jam, I call it. Lady R needed no further invite to cut a slice and pop it into her mouth. Oh, divine, the savoury, the sweet together. You can bring me more plates of that. And at last Sam laughed. Helen took a bite, and yes, truly great. This should be on the regular menu. Oh, it will be, as soon as it's premiered at the gala dinner. Then she saw Sam turn, look towards the other side of the restaurant, the move quick, nervous. His gaze locked on the frizzy-haired waitress, her hair streaked with purple. He shook his head. It seemed like he might storm over there to have Helen guessed some unpleasant words with the server. Julie fired out a hand to her husband's arm. And only then did Sam turn back, force a smile, and resume his tour of the plates. This one here, lasagnetta al basilico. Pasta? Helen asked, thinking that the small square might not fit a gourmet tasting menu. Another genuine smile from Sam this time. Taste it. And this time Helen was first to attack the dish, the pasta super delicate, near crepe-like. The layer of pesto mixed with just a spot of cheese blending with a delicate sauce on top, and once she tasted, she didn't know what he'd done to transform the dish into the amazing tastes it delivered, but it was simply one of the best things she had ever eaten. Wow, Helen said, a word she rarely uttered. Lady Repton was also digging into the small dish. Four cuts and it was gone, and Lady Repton's face looked genuinely disappointed. Now that is something. Helen saw Sam and Julie both smile at their reactions. She and Michael liked this couple, Sam always working so hard in the kitchen, and Julie's presence in the dining room, sunny, efficient, so warm, making the spotted pig such a special place. Sam was about to describe the third plate, what appeared to be little eggs, sitting in a small, creamy puddle, but he turned to the server and shot up from his chair, they watched as Sam went to the young girl. Is he? A word? He said, and disappeared into the kitchen with her. Julie, looking embarrassed, hurried over to clear the plates. An attempt at a distraction, thought Helen. I've been a bit bumpy recently, said Julie in explanation. New server and Sam, what with the baby coming and everything, all a bit tense. But Helen, seeing Sam confront the girl, who must have committed some kind of front-of-the-room faux pas, had to wonder, is that all? Sam was so passionate about his cooking, but was there something else making him so stressed? A few moments later, he came out, again forcing a smile. Sorry, uh, good staff always need uh, training. I know exactly what you mean, Sam, Lady Repton said, breaking the ice. So, that last plate, they look like little eggs, Helen said. And now Sam grinned. The spotted pig wasn't known for overly fussy food, but she imagined with the Opera Society dinner he had decided to set the bar high. Baby canals sitting in a classic sauce nantua. Lady Repton had already speared one mini canal with the tiny fork provided. Mm, I must say, each of these plates is better than the last. Absolutely delicious. And Sam, having achieved his goal of wowing Lady R, stood up. Julie gave him a quick pat on the back, and Sam grinned. No, I'd better get back to... But then a breeze slid in from the chilly night outside, cutting off his words. The door to the pig flew open. <laughs>